गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू द लाइव रिविजन सेशन फॉर द कोर्स रिसर्च मेथोडोलॉजी द कोर्स कोड इज एन ओ सी ट्वेंटी फोर जी ट्वेंटी वन माई नेम इज अमेद उखले एंड लाइक ऑलवेज वील वील जस्ट स्टार्ट विद सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स अबाउट दिस कोर्स टूडे वील बी हैविंग लाइक रिविजन सेशन वेर वील बी रिवाइजिंग ऑल द असाइनमेंट्स फ्रॉम दैट वी हैव डन फ्रॉम जीरो टू द लास्ट वीक असाइनमेंट सो बेसिकली दिस इज दिस शुड कवर एटलीस्ट ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ वट योर वट विल कम इन योर एग्जाम सो आई वुड लाइक रिक्वेस्ट यू टू बी अटेंटिव वील गो इन अ रैपिड फायर मोड वी विल जस्ट गो वेरी फास्ट If you have any question, you can stop uh, stop me there by unmuting yourself, or else you can uh, just uh, like uh, 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 ask uh, when uh, when I uh, stop for the questions after each uh, assignment is complete. So I hope my screen is visible and we can start with the things. This is the basic uh, 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 things we, uh, which we discuss every time that this is uh, to boost your performance. This is not compulsory and highly encouraged. The video will be uploaded. on youtube and you can uh, access it through the uh, google doc so now you uh, you guys are well aware of this course basically it is for the masters level student to introduce them how formal research is taking place and also um like clear the common misconceptions so this is a eight week course we have completed all the eight weeks um so we'll uh, quickly begin with the week uh, week 0 assignment so the first question is research results can only be presented in english it's uh, true or false uh, so the answer is false um if i'm going very fast you can just stop me uh, but uh, we have a lot of questions to cover so uh, we'll be going uh, fast so the second question a good paper should have an element of sub uh, suspense in it uh, the answer is again false uh so a research should have um, value to science it should not be like uh, it need not be uh, like uh, have a suspense to it it, it should just be like uh, it should have a value to uh, it should add value to science so question number 3 it is not ethical to publish results of your lab mates without their permission true or false so again true the, the answer is true Going to the fourth question, safety is an in uh, in is uh, an important is important in laboratory research. Uh, uh, should uh, uh, research should not be carried out in co by compromising safety. The answer is true. Um, uh, question number five: What is publicly known? Uh, uh, what is publicly known already can be patented. The answer is false. Um, uh, for patient uh, for a patent uh, to be granted, it has to be unique. and it has it should have a commercial value to it um question number 6 it is necessary to cross check the re readings displayed by the instruments true or false the answer is true obviously uh, the instruments can have um, readings uh, like can, uh, can there can be error in the instruments obviously it is very important uh, to cross check the readings um so it it is not that you have to uh, check every reading but you should uh, like look at how the readings are going on and you should um, like uh, cross check them um the so question number 7 a good literature review is useful in directing good research obviously it's uh, it's true without literature review you cannot actually uh, conduct any good uh, research you need to know what is the literature what is the uh, what is the work has been done before you so that you can do good research so uh, the answer is true um question number 8 theoretical mod models are su uh, typically superior and more correct when compared to experiments the answer is false obviously theoretical models uh, do not like uh, take into answer many times do don't take into consideration some real world uh, things that may happen so one of the major uh, example is uh, nano material so basically if you uh, uh, so if you go by theor theory uh, nano materials uh, of uh, theories of engineering nano materials uh, do don't fit into it so you have to go at atom atomic physics uh, theories so like the models of me uh, mechanical engineering will fail um, in uh, when you go on a na nano scale you have to go into physics models so these are the things which you uh, which are there so that is why uh, theoretical models are not way, uh, always superior uh, they are both have their pros and cons uh, it is important to talk fast during a technical presentation obviously so uh, yes. uh, 
यासु भाई थेरेटिकल मॉडल वी मीनो मैथमेटिकल मॉडल यस यस थियोरेटिकल मॉडल इज लाइक मैथमेटिकल मॉडल सिमुलेशंस एंड ऑल दोस थिंग्स so it is you know, important to talk fast during technical presentation uh, false actually it should be like uh, during technical presentation people should be able to understand what is going on uh, so it is always important to like uh, talk in a manner where uh, your audience is able to understand if you are uh, presenting to people from like germany or japan or somewhere where english is not their first language you should even talk slowly because they are the else they would not be able to grasp what you are saying so it is very important to talk slowly more the special effects in the slide better the technical presentation the answer is false obviously the content matters not the special effects so we are done with the uh, um, zero th assi uh, assignment so this is a previous year assignment uh, so this was basically a passage based of assignment you can expect this kind of um, questions maybe one or two because in two assignments uh, assignment uh, of week 1 and week 8 practice assignment uh, we have this uh, passage type of question so you can expect a passage type of question so obviously this is um, i won't uh, go into it uh, in detail uh, but uh, once i upload this slides i would uh, request you to actually one one time go through it because this, this is very self explanatory these questions are not uh like uh, difficult to understand so you can solve it if you have any problem you can go through our first week video and you can uh, look into it so uh, basically you can expect one kind uh, one question at least uh, of this type in your exam uh, maybe one question with five sub questions or maybe with uh, two or three sub questions but you can expect one passage type of question in your exam that is for sure i can tell you that so we'll uh, any uh, any questions with the week one content if no we uh, i'll move to week 2 uh, so i think so nobody has any question so we'll move, uh, move to week 2 we, uh, we have to go fast as possible so experimental data generated from a setup must <coughs> must validate the uh, uh, theoretical predictions or the model designed for the setup um uh, the question uh, there is like true false sometimes never so the answer is sometimes uh so uh there has to be some kind of um, like uh what do you say for some readings at least they are uh, the experimental data and theoretical prediction should match if the if there is complete mismatch then there is some problem or some or the other problem with your setup so it is very important that uh, there is some uh, amount of uh, matching uh, between your experimental data and uh, the theoretical data Uh, which of the following are ca categorized as primary source of literature survey so there is a primary source of literature survey is basically when you get uh, the data from the um, main person so uh, if i have a uh, like if i am doing a research and if i am publishing that report uh, in uh, maybe a thesis uh, or in a uh, research paper so and you are reading it uh, from the work i have written so uh, if you are re reading my thesis or you are reading my paper it is called as a primary source of literature survey if you are uh, um, if i am doing uh, the research uh, a person x is writing a review paper on that research and then you are reading the person x is uh, review paper that is called as the secondary source of uh, literature survey so from that i guess you can understand what can be uh, like the a uh, primary source of literature and secondary source of literature so the options here are periodicals and research reports conference proceedings and official publication compilation and reviews directories and yearbooks so the answer is obviously uh, periodicals and research reports because these are the things where the author will be putting uh, his work conference proceedings and official publications obviously here also the author is putting his work uh, out there compilations and reviews obviously uh, like if i am doing the work person x will be reviewing the work or putting it in his or her review and that will be coming so that will come as a secondary source of literature again directories year books some uh, is it problem for everyone or just The slide is not visible. Okay. Is it visible now? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So there might be some lag. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just uh, just follow me. Um. So um, as I was saying.
thing uh, directories and yearbooks are again uh, made by uh, like uh, people from uh, somebody else and there might be some uh, desk journalist or desk uh, reporters who might be doing it so that again comes under the secondary source of literature so the primary sources periodicals uh, research reports and uh, conference proceedings and official publication so uh, question number 3 literature survey is important because it helps in getting a summary of the work that has been done till date in uh, some particular research area it is helpful in ensuring that a research work is not getting repeated it is helpful in understanding the approaches taken by the scientist and what are the gaps in the process it is helpful in clarifying the controversial results that one can get so obviously the answer is all of the above literature survey is basically the most important step of the research um, it uh, helps in getting summary of all the work that has been done it is uh, helpful in ensuring the research work is not getting repeated and it is also helpful in understanding of uh, like what other uh, scientists have got what their results are and if the con- if there are some controversial results why these controversial results are, are there so that is there uh, so moving to the question number 4 the abstracting database for uh, systematic manual searches include inspect and compendex pubmed Wiki, uh, wikipedia chemical abstract services so the answer is inspect compendex pubmed chemical abstract wikipedia is not a abstracting service it is just a encyclopedia so all these are uh, abstracting services and wikipedia is a manual uh, like a uh, encyclopedia kind of service which of the following uh, can be used to store the bibliographic information while saving as a file in your computer xml format endnote format biptex format none of these so the answer is uh, xml endnote and biptex all the three are um, uh, can be used endnote format is for uh, endnote uh, a biptex format is for latex uh, latex uh, software xml format can be used uh by uh, it is like it can be used by uh, 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 like mendeley as well as uh, endnote as well as uh, citavi so all the three can uh, xml format is uh, compatible uh, endnote is for endnote and biptex is for latex uh, publications so uh, we'll move to the, anyone has any question with the practice assignment if no we'll move to the second uh, uh, pra- uh, proper assignment consider the following research uh, resources you are collecting towards your research document or conference proceeding uh, with an i i issn number available a link to a website of professional society a reference in a journal article that you have not seen yet a uh, article from a newly launched journal with volume number page number and year but no i i s s n a web web article with doi link which of the following can be considered as a archival reference for inclusion in publication so archival reference is basically um something that uh, there is a like a copy so what happens is uh, when there is a doi link or i s s n number or isbn number isbn you might have seen on your books so what happens is there is one archive that has been created for that uh, work so uh, even if that publisher shut down or if that uh, anything shut down there is one archive copy that will be there in that uh, like uh, 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 with like um, for that uh, book or for that publication so the, this archival references are basically uh, which have been like which have some like uh, a uh, serial number that is uh given by uh, uh some uh, like international standardizing agencies like issn number isbn number doi number or uh, all those things so the answer is one uh, con- con- uh conference proceeding with issn number available that is the thing uh, if you have not seen the journal article it is not a uh, reference uh if you are linked to a professional society it doesn't have an I- archival value uh, it is not uh, there um then um are uh, uh, in the fourth question there is no iss number uh, so it is also not there uh, the fifth uh, web article with a doi link uh, actually it should be there but uh, in these these questions it was uh, not given in the uh, in this previous year assignment so we are taking only one as the answer so in case you get it in your uh, exam it should be one and five uh, so again uh, moving to question number 2 uh, consider the following paragraph found at the opening of a research document uh, semantic web technologies have developed 
significantly in recent years the web ontology language standard owl 2 uh, uh, along with uh, editing knowledge bases reasoning engine such as hermit pellet uh, fact plus plus visualization tools such as ontograph always tools such as uh, Spar- sparkql and dl co- uh, Uh, query engines uh, glim uh, tw- uh, 2018 apache yena um, two uh, interface uh, queries uh, with knowledge uh, bases um, explanation workbenches sw uh, rl that helps in rule based constru- uh, construction of axioms and owl api for programming have bought this technology to uh, app- uh, application maturity in several domains identify the error in the document so uh, what uh, are the errors so citation should be all numeric but uh, one of them is not citation should be in sequence but they are not citation should be uniform style but they are not citation uh, should be all uh, author year but uh, m- uh, most are not so the answer is c citation should be in uniform style uh, what style you um, take again depends on uh, your uh, the journal preferences or the uh, preferences of uh, you uh, like Uh, your university's requirement when you are writing a thesis so but what is important that they are in a uni- uh, uniform style if you are uh, following a numeric style it has to be in a numeric style all throughout uh, and it should be in a sequence 1 2 3 4 uh, that way so uh, if if it you are having in a numeric style um they are, it should be in a sequence manner uh, but uh, again one of uh, important thing is it should be in a uniform style so you uh, you should not skip uh, or change the sl- uh, citation style in between so that is very important um move to question number 3 consider so the b b b option b won't be correct it should uh, be in sequence like both p and c uh so if you are uh, only having a numeric style it should be in a sequence so uh, what happens is um, uh, there okay. are two types okay, of this one. Uh, so if you are having this kind of word kind of thing uh, here you will uh, write the author name but uh, when you will go in your uh, references uh, you will have to write uh, uh, alphabetically so th- there are uh, every style has different uh, thing so you will have to find out what the style is when you are uh, doing it so um, consider the following paragraph uh, at the beginning of research document liquid and uh, glasses are uh, isotropic that is they have infinite symmetry uh, uh, colon 8 uh then uh, the material looks uh, same uh, in all directions so the physical property should uh, also remain same in all directions the tensor representing the physical property of this material should uh, be isotropic that is any uh, arbitrary transformation of the coordinate system should uh, leave the matrix containing the values of the physical property unchanged it is possible only if the property is representable by an isotropic tensor of corresponding order uh thus for the second uh, order tensor such as thermal con- uh, conductivity diffusivity etc of the liquid uh, only one value is necessary so what is the problem here so here what they have done is they have used a single uh, citation style unlike the previous uh, pa- uh, uh, previous passage here the citation style is the same so here the uh, answer is uh, uh, two and three Uh, they should be citation should be uh, sequential but they uh, they are not and also when you are doing multiple citations you should have 3 to 5 you have to put in uh, like a, a dash so these are the problems in this uh, passage so uh, for every passage the you have to find out the problem so which of the following bibliographic details is adequate if uh, uh, available to retrieve all the other archival details of an archival journal so the answer is doi number so digital object identifier if you have that uh, you can uh, even if your journal is uh, cl- closed or shut down uh, you will be able to get the data uh, question number 5 which of the following methods uh, of searching literature is available uh, is suitable to identify the earliest contributor of a scientific outcome out- outcome uh, research based uh, uh, keyword based search followed by sorting uh, by year of the publication citation based search followed by sorting uh, uh, by location of the publication keyword based search followed by sorting of by citation back reference based search following the keyword based search so the answer is back reference based search so basically what you do is you do a keyword re- uh, based search 
then you find out uh, what is the oldest work in that then you again uh, read that work and you find out like you go on uh, back referencing from the references so you go uh, to uh, one work you find out the references in that work you find out the reference of your interest then you go to that work then again you find out what is there so you will be able to find out who is the earliest one um, earliest contributor to that scientific outcome which of the uh, question number 6 which of the following set of bibliographic fields for a reference does not contain the redundant information that is useful in overcoming typographical errors if any author journal volume issue page number journal volume page number author journal year issue page number journal issue uh, journal year volume issue page number so all you need is journal volume page number so author name obviously if you have author name uh, you will have uh, typographical error and it will also uh, there will be redundant information so all you need is journal volume name and page num uh, volume number and page number that is uh, more than enough uh, to find any uh, bibliographic content uh that is there for at least for uh, the reputed journals um moving to the question number 7 which of the following indices is considered as a major of impact of a particular author in its area uh, of specialization total number of article published h hirsch index or h index of the author number of views of his latest article number of uh, downloads of the articles in a year so the answer is uh, b h index so h index is basically the number of times a uh, article has has been cited so basically if it is uh, h index is uh, 10 so basically he has uh, at least 10 articles uh, which have it, um, at least 10 citations so if the h index is 4 there are uh, the author has at least four articles which have four uh, at least four citations so that is how the um, h index uh, changes uh, so i hope it is clear um which of the following formats is not recommended for storing bibliographic information while saving as a file on your computer bib text format xml format endnote format play a plain text format so the answer is plain text format so uh, all these formats like bib text format xml format uh, and endnote format can be uh, like uh, you can transfer them in that particular citation management software so basically what you will do is you will go on google scholar you will download that um, citation format and then you will uh, put it in citavi uh, or you will put it in uh, latex or you will put it in endnote so but if you do it in plain text format you will not be able to do that transfer so you may have to uh, do the transfer manually so that is why it is not recommended to use the plain text format so moving to question number 9 you have searched a keyword using search engine and have picked it uh, from a website of an organization which of the following is an accepted reference in a publication url of the search engine url of the organization url uh, where the keyword was found along with the date last access on it keyword and search engine used so the last date is very important so when you are doing a uh, citation of a url url with uh, where the keyword was found along with the date of last access is very important so the answer is c uh, so any questions with uh, week 3 uh, assignments uh, week 2 assignments please show the last question again okay so okay i'll speak slowly so the uh, people are having problem so i was trying to cover as fast as possible so um yeah yeah done uh, understood okay so since uh, many uh, are having a problem uh, with the speed so i'll just uh, go through the questions once more for uh, all to view them and then we'll move to the next week assignment so just have a look at the questions i won't uh, speak anything just have a look at the questions so i'll wait, uh, i'll go through the questions uh, for like 30 30 seconds or 40 seconds we'll just uh, go through each question and then you just uh, have a look at it because uh, i guess many people missed out on it <coughs> हेलो हेलो यस हां सर यू आर गोइंग टू अपलोड दिस वीडियो ऑन आवर एनपीटीएल नेट कोर्स या या एवरीथिंग विल बी अपलोडेड द पीपीटी आल्सो विल बी कमिंग पीपीटी विल आल्सो बी इन दिस सेक्शन इट इज अपलोडेड 
uh, in that uh, if you go on the main website at the right corner uh, there is uh, problem solving session so from there you can uh, have a look okay by tomorrow it will be uploaded uh, yeah by tomorrow morning i uh, i will uh, do it so i'll mostly i'll try it today night only but uh, uh, it will take some time so maybe tomorrow morning okay uh, so this is just for uh, your uh, like revision this is um, you uh, i'll just go through all the questions uh, i i know many of them are not being able to follow uh but the thing is we have to complete all the assignments so i what i'll do is i'll just go through uh these these questions uh, for uh, uh for for your reference so anyway uh, uh like practice week 1 content is not that like uh, uh important so this content i'll just go through it uh, slowly and uh, um uh we'll uh, do uh, like Uh, from the next week content so from week 3 content i'll go slow uh, for uh, the benefit of others oh, about that uh, yes krishna uh, uh, yesterday like i told about the author session uh, like the instructor session yeah, will yeah. there be any instructor i have mailed them uh, but i don't know what will happen uh, i have mailed them but they have not responded maybe i okay. mailed it later I mailed it at around two uh, o'clock or something, so maybe they might have not uh, checked it right now. Uh, so I uh, maybe you can expect something tomorrow uh, if if at all if something is going to happen. But uh, like I tried, okay. I have mailed, I have sent them a mail. It's just uh, uh, I I forgot uh, in the morning, and then I was actually looking through the video that time only I remembered. So it took me some time actually. So I have mailed them. I have mailed them for sure. Okay, thank you. So question number three. Question number four. just have a look at the questions read them if you have any doubts if you want me to stop if you have uh, missed the question just um, let me know i'll just scroll, uh, like wait at every uh, question for around 30 to 40 seconds if you uh, need me to wait uh, more you just let me know because i was fast for this assignment i'm just uh, like uh, giving you time to go through it from now uh, next onwards i will go very slowly Excuse me, sir. Yeah, yeah. Previous question. Yeah, previous question number two. Uh, so according to the passage, uh, don't you think that the option number two is also correct here because um, they have kept it like you know serial number. Uh, so the the thing is, uh, if you are uh, using a specific because they are not in that sequence actually. 
या 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 आई अग्री सो वन थिंग इज यूनिफॉर्मिटी इज द फर्स्ट प्रायोरिटी सो इफ यू हैव सिक्वेंस एंड यूनिफॉर्मिटी सो फर्स्ट इज यूनिफॉर्मिटी इज प्रायोरिटी सो इफ यू वॉन्ट यूनिफॉर्मिटी सो यू कैन यू कूड हैव ऑल्सो गॉन फॉर दिस काइंड ऑफ सो यू कैन सी द आई एम हाईलाइटिंग दिस ऑथर नेम सो यू कैन यू कूड हैव गॉन विद दिस सो इन केस इन केस दिस इन केस दिस इज एन एम एस क्यू देन वी कैन सेलेक्ट बोथ या यू कैन सेलेक्ट बोथ uh so yeah, so see the first uh, first priority is uh, uniformity so uniformity is first priority you can go with any style so uh, the sequence yeah uh, no make sure she the other just is khaja bahut yaar mujhe nahi aata so sequence is uh, like uh, only if you are going for numeric type of uh, um like uh, for uh, citation style sequence is very important so in this question they are specifically saying that uniformity is more important sequence uh, so in the next question where the style is given that it is a numeric style that time sequence comes uh, as the main priority so here since the person if he wants he can go with this uh, uh-huh. style also so in this case uh, sequence is uh, doesn't matter so because uh, the author is uh, so uh here in the question uh, in the question the uh, the paragraph the page where there is the paragraph yeah. at the top uh, the previous slide uh, there it's written at the top that this is the beginning of the yeah uh, document it's so, the opening paragraph. opening paragraph so yeah so because it's opening so maybe it should start from one yeah so if you are using the uh, numeric style no it should be the where it is to it should be one so uh, if it was a numeric style uh, i triple e style so that is uh, called as i triple e style if you are using that citation style it should be in sequence so in that case sequence is uh, the uh, re- yeah. uh, requisite but if we are going with the apa style or uh, yeah. this kind of style so that time sequencing doesn't matter so what here what we are saying is the citation should be in uniform style but they are not so that is the main problem sequence is a secondary but first is like you you should either follow ieee apa or harvard or like whatever that style you should for, uh, follow so that is the main priority so in the third question so if you can see in the third question uh, where uh, everything is given in the numeric style so the style is um, the uh, is uh, is the ieee style so that is when they are saying that okay uh, that time the sequence becomes important because the ieee style ka characteristic is it is in sequence so that is why in the uh, in this question we are only saying that it should be in uniform style so that is the main uh, like the main crux of it uh, but uh, if you um, put a b also thank you sir it is not got wrong. the points it is not wrong so uh, again uh, question number 3 just have a look at it so here uh, it's uh, the citation style is the ieee or numeric style so the thing is it should be sequentially arranged and uh, the multiple citation should be 3 uh, to 5 uh, like there should be a represented by a dot so that is how it is um so we go to question number 4 so i just uh, i'm just going through the chat um so uh, i have been asked the question whether the paper pattern will be what so we discussed this yesterday uh, in detail so the thing is uh, it is not been told yet and actually there is a author session uh, the instructor session in which they actually tell you what the paper pattern will be 
but now the problem is i mailed them that uh, why is it not being con- uh, conducted and i re- uh, requested them to conduct it uh, we'll see what happens but the major thing is i will just tell you that uh, you can expect 95% that it will be a mcq question so because there is too many people and um, like correcting descriptive papers will be very difficult and many of you might not be having a very good typing speed or something like that so you can expect mcq questions uh, that uh, 95% at least i can uh, guarantee you that 95% probability there is uh, that you will get uh, mcq questions hello uh, mcq or hello hello uh, you are not audible sir ha uh, sir mcq q MCQ, MSQ, both. Uh, that I am not telling you that, but it will be objective type is what I am saying. Like that is the ninety-five percent chance that it will be objective type. Um, th- so whether it will be uh, a, a MCQ, MSQ, that I don't know. That I cannot uh, tell you anything. But what I am telling you, descriptive. I am ninety-five uh, percent sure that there won't be any descriptive kind of question. So which you have to type in or write uh, things. so that will not be there is what my guess is or 95% uh, guess so i'm not con- uh, like um, committing you anything but my 95% i'm sure that there will not be any descriptive where you have to type in a paragraph whether it is msq or mcq i don't know i cannot tell you anything but uh, as i told you if it is a msq you have to uh, see the whether it's a square box uh, if it is a mcq it is a, it will be a radio button um so dr n sarkar has asked uh, um whether it is um, like um, 100 marks or uh, 100 questions or 75 total questions we don't know it can also happen so there are many times it is like uh, some questions will be one mark each some questions will be tw- uh, two marks each uh, and uh, like that way it is so the total number of questions we don't know but i can tell you that it will be uh, like easy uh, and uh, there will be like uh, that way but the uh, exact breakup i don't know and i i have no idea about it but like there will be some questions which will be one mark each some questions will be two mark each that way it will be that much i can tell you and uh, you have asked whether the questions will be from recorded lectures uh, no so i can tell you that uh, uh, like there will be uh, three types of questions there will be one recall there will be application and there will be miscellaneous so recall will be around 40% uh, uh, application will be 40% and miscellaneous will be 20% so recall will be you have to go through the videos that is the lecture videos not the uh, this assignment solving videos that is the proper lecture videos which you have to go through from there there will be questions what like something like uh, like some concept which the instructor would have said uh, de- uh, during the session so that will be there um so then it will be application based so something or like uh, what is there in the um, the um, the assignments and uh, miscellaneous will be like a passage or something like that so you can expect questions from all three uh, places so i would request you to go through the uh, recorded lectures at least once so that is the proper recorded lectures on the nptel portal um so i hope i have answered all the chat questions till now so we'll just move ahead with the uh, assignment so there are three more questions and then we'll uh, like just go through it because i just uh, uh, like spoke these questions and you were not able to like grasp that time so i'm just giving you time after which we'll start with the uh, week 3 assignment So you have given a null hypothesis with ninety five percent confidence interval. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no. But I can tell you that uh, the descriptive is uh, very, very less chance because correcting uh, it is. Uh, and the thing is, it will be uh, like there are many people who might not be able to who are not very uh, like. Um, 
well versed in typing so in the courses which have e written th- after them so like noc 24 gs that are the general courses since uh, they are open to all the like uh, domains uh, it is like highly unlikely that descriptive questions come so majorly it is uh, mcu question only but i like again sometimes they come up with uh, new things so but like at least for the courses which um, we like for uh, where my fa- my my uh, my guide does the question papers and all those things so he is very uh, like um, concentrate and um, uh, so uh, he uh, always gives the mcq or multiple cho- choice questions only so i and and i know what the intricacies are with the nptel thing so i am quite sure that it will not be a descriptive type of questions but uh, like uh, what whether it will be msq or mcq i i seriously don't know what it will be so your null hypothesis will be tested on saturday yeah yeah well uh, please leave the comments in the youtube whether uh, what you got uh, in the youtube videos what you got actually whether my hypothesis was right or wrong so uh, yeah uh, so doctor uh, doctor uh, mr sarkar has asked uh, whether it is uh, so recorded lectures practice assignments and the uh, p- uh, pdfs of uh, this classes are all should refer yes you should uh, refer that and the major thing which i would uh, request all of you all that read the questions two three times so you can see even in the assignments the questions are uh, twisted sometimes they are complicated or sometimes they are uh, like two options are uh, very close to each other so read the questions multiple times uh, just don't be in a hurry you might get to leave the um, exam after one and a half hours so if others are leaving don't just try to leave um, read the questions take your own time it's a 3 hour exam uh, you use the time well because you are anyway going there you will you are taking an effort Uh, spending uh, one and a half hour there uh, or spending three hours there is not going to like uh, bring much of uh, like is not going to uh, have a like saving that one and a half hour is not going to give you anything so put that uh, effort in your exam uh, try to do well uh, try to uh, read all the questions uh, regularly uh, like with uh, great detail so i think we have completed with the second as a week assignment so now we'll uh, move slowly with the uh, third week assignment so the question is safety must be an important discipline of our culture uh, of our routine uh, when uh, we are in a laboratory or industrial environment the common sources which have a potential to cause damage uh, available in our lab towards which we need to be careful are sources of heat chemicals acid bases etc pressurized gas cylinders electricity and wa- water sources so the answer is obviously all of the above so safety is paramount basically and there can be risk from all the four things so there if there is a source of heat obviously you can suffer from burns injury if there is chemicals again the, uh, you can suffer from burns injury or uh, main, uh, various other injuries pressurized cylinder gas cylinder if uh, you are not uh, proper in handling them and uh, the sal- cylinder explodes again there will be like mm, there might even be death again water and uh, electricity and water sources there can be like short circuit so safety is very paramount and you should uh, look at all the like um, sources uh, that can uh, cause damage so i hope this is clear so the uh, we move to the second question a uh, doctor ran a diagnostic test on a patient and he found that ecg graph resulting from the test showed uh, some signs of concerns what type of data analysis uh, should the do- uh, doctor use to determine the actual reason of the problem with good accuracy predictive exploratory prescriptive quantitative so basically in predictive basically you have some data and uh, so uh, you basically uh, what you do is you have a graph and uh, from that uh, you uh, match pattern so basically that is done uh, a lot in xrd so when you want to find out what the material is so you uh, take the uh, uh, you take the pattern xrd uh, spectra 
and then you match it with the existing library so uh, there is the existing library of all the structures so you just uh, do the match pattern thing so that is something called as the pr uh, predictive uh, um, uh, data uh, data analysis then exploratory is basically you try and find out what can be the case so you just uh, 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 do like uh, one so there are uh, there will be like some uh, something which uh, you uh, you might have done in uh, like um, in your plus 2 where you had to identify in chemistry basically you had to identify the salt and all those things so that is uh, called as the exploratory type of research wherein you do the certain type of things and then you um, you explore uh, you like there is a certain protocol you follow and you explore it uh, prescriptive is basically you find some concern and then uh, you do further uh, detailed analysis so you uh, so now you have uh, he, uh, the doctor here has found, uh, done the diagnostic test and he has found that there is some problem with the ECG so when there is some problem with ECG there will be like 2D echo or something like that so uh, there will be a proper protocol so like if there is this problem in your ECG then you the person should go for 2D echo or something like that so that is called as the prescriptive type of uh, uh, data analysis and then quantitative and qualitative is basically quantitative is you get a number and qualitative is like positive or negative so what kind of data analysis um, the doctor will do to get uh, like good results so the answer is prescriptive and quantitative so basically uh, the doctor because there is some problem with the ecg graph he'll uh, fi find the sir why quantitative so he wants to find out whether it's uh, what what extent it is right uh, the if there is uh, uh, like if you have a blood pressure and if there is uh, if you know only there is high blood pressure so uh, will the doctor be able to like uh, gauge what is the how big the problem is and if the doctor tells you that okay the blood pressure is 160 120 which is really very high so that uh, or else uh, so you uh, the doctor wants to have a quantitative number right so the doctor will know okay this is serious this is moderate this is just like uh, proper like uh, so to understand the seriousness he will get only in quantitative right he won't get it qualitative qualitative will be like positive negative uh, so that person has high blood pressure ha huh, high blood pressure hai. if it is even above 120 it will come in high blood pressure so that is uh, why you need to do quantitative uh, that that's why the doctor will have to do a quantitative test um, yeah yeah but here here the question says uh, what type of data analysis should the doctor use to determine the actual reason so they are just concerned about the reason not about the quantity i believe so the, to find out the reason if it is uh, like uh, what uh, you need uh, like a quantitative uh, like uh, that uh, if uh, there might be some problem with the ECG uh, we are hypothesizing it is because of high blood pressure so if the uh, like he has done some 2, 2D echo or something like that and then he like uh, 2D echo is fine but that same problem is we, uh, when the high uh, blood pressure is above 160 but that problem you might not get if the blood pressure is uh, 130 so in both 130 and 160 both are high blood pressure both come under high blood pressure but the problem will only elapse at 160 so then the doctor will know okay yeah, yeah that uh, i quantitatively he finds out that the blood pressure is 160 so uh, yeah okay this might be the reason there is some problem in the uh, ecg graph so quantitative is very important in that sense because that will give you the number okay so in case of qualitative yeah in case of qualitative then uh, what to please give an example uh, like uh, in the doctor's case so pregnancy test it is the most simple thing where pregnancy test is the like uh, most uh, qualitative i can give you so uh, whether it is the lady is pregnant or not that uh, that is what the uh, the test gives how many babies are there uh, it won't give it will just give uh, the whether the lady is pregnant or not whether it, how many months also it won't give it will just give whether it is yes or no so that is the uh, like the most simplest example of qualitative and quantitative the most simple example is the blood pressure or the glucose so you have uh, the glucose uh, you get the number right you get the uh, glucose number how what is the sugar or uh, blood pressure you get what is the blood pressure so like 120 80 or 130 whatever the if you have done blood pressure uh, you will find out 
so that is the like you can say qualitative and quantitative i hope i'm clear uh, any other questions yes yeah. yes sir yes sir thank you sir okay so we'll move to the third question so data analysis can be helpful in parameter estimation hypothesis testing uh, model development fault detection so basically it is useful in everything so data data is the new oil as uh, mukesh ji says so uh, like it is basically used, it can be used in everything so it uh, it is used in fault detection so basically uh, it is used in um, like data analysis through data analysis only the warranty period of your phone has been determined so there are many companies nowadays giving uh, the warranty period of 2 years there are many uh, phone companies also because uh, through data analysis only they have found out that okay we can give uh, this uh, like uh, the failure rate is uh, low so we can give the 2 year warranty that will give more customers so even uh, for uh, your acs earlier th there used to be only 1 year warranty nowadays they are giving 5 year warranty on compressor so all this is because of data analytics only they are able to uh, find out that okay we, even if we give 5 year warranty we won't be in loss so let us give it we might get more customers so that is how the thing is working so data analytics is uh, like using that only everything is working the fault detection model development hypothesis testing parameter estimation everything is done using uh, data analysis only um, so this is fairly simple um, so we'll uh, move to the next question uh, in statistical analysis of a data set the p value associated with hypothesis testing on the sample mean was found to be very low the following decision can be made as a result the null hypothesis is assumed perfectly the null hypothesis is satisfactory with little error the null hypothesis has to be rejected and the none of the above so the answer is p value if it is very low uh, you have to reject the null hypothesis so uh, uh, we have this uh, have a, like data analysis uh, uh, testing in week 7 so uh, i hope you guys have gone through those videos uh, it is uh, like you won't be able, uh, asked to solve the questions but you should know what how this hypothesis testing and everything works so that is very important so we have a question number 5 a temperature sensor is installed at the bottom of the cooling to uh, to uh, cooling tower storage trying to me uh, measure the temperature of the outlet water the sensor did not function properly for some time and gave the data with higher temperature values the conclusion we can draw from the process are since the data with uh, different uh, values were recorded uh, this increase uh, increase the possibility of wi uh, wide analysis uh, thus very useful uh, for our work the data obtained cannot be reliable because there is uh, no true data from the system but uh, malfunctioned one data uh, can be used with good accuracy using the predictive data uh, analysis where we can assume the ex uh, extent of the data and finally subtract the errors uh, from the final value none of these so in the first what they are saying is uh, uh since the data is uh, different values were recorded uh, it uh, the it is uh, giving wide uh, data scope for wide analysis so we should use it uh, use the data in the second it is saying that the since the uh, temperature was uh, since the sensor was not functioning in the end uh, the data is not a true data and we should uh, mal malfunction one and it is not reliable in the third what it is saying that it is uh, data can be used with good accuracy in the question itself it is saying that uh, it didn't function for some time and then gave data with higher temperature values so how can it be a accurate uh, data so uh, since it's not the accurate data you cannot even use for predictive type of data analysis so the answer is uh, b uh, it is unreliable data it is not true and uh, it has um, since uh, the function uh, since the system was a malfunctioned one and you have to repeat the experiment so that is the answer for this question uh, so any questions with respect to this assignment um, so we'll move to the uh, question uh, see, uh, Uh, que uh, question number one: A signal is say, uh, said to be necessary to stochastic if it ne uh, never reaches a st uh, steady state. Um, uh, the value at any instant is not accurately predictable. Oscillates before decaying to zero. Starting time of the signal is unknown. So basically, uh, st uh, stochastic is basically um, what you can say is random. 
सो इट इज अ रैंडम प्रोसेस सो यू यू कैन नॉट एक्यूरेटली प्रिडिक्ट एनी रैंडम वेरिएबल इफ देर इज एनी रैंडम थिंग देन यू कैन नॉट प्रिडिक्ट इट राइट सो द वैल्यू एट एनी इंस्टेंट कैन नॉट बी एक्यूरेटली प्रिडिक्टेबल दैट इज वेन द सिग्नल सेट टू बी स्टॉकैस्टिक सो या so what which of the following can be treated as a deterministic signal so stochastic was completely random signal deterministic is where something can be determined by um, what you say uh, by some mathematical equation or something you have you can there is a way to determine the uh, like uh, signal so measurements of a body temperature position of a free falling body in uh, wind superposition of two purely oscillatory waves daily blood pressure of an individual so obviously uh, the, uh, measurement of body body temperature body body is random so you cannot determine it um, same uh, position of uh, freely falling body in the wind the gravity will change uh, so you cannot actually determine it uh, although there there are newton's law but uh, the uh, there there is wind also going on so the uh, because of wind uh, the uh, there are other forces other than gravity also there are other forces that will be acting on it so you cannot predict it in this condition um daily blood pressure again random it changes uh, even with uh, like situations it changes whereas uh, superposition of a purely uh, two purely oscillatory waves so you have two waves uh, or you are superposing over each other so there will be a equation so there will be uh, when you are having two sine waves you are superposing over each other uh, then you will have an equation from that equation you can predict the value of uh, at any instant so the um, uh, that uh, only that case is uh, treated as a purely oscillatory signal uh, so we'll move i hope i'm not very fast um, we'll move to uh, question number 3 uh, which of the following is true in statistical data analysis the estimates uh, only refer to the fitted parameters of a model a uh, statistic is a number obtained by performing a mathematical operation on the data uh, an estimate is also a statistic um, estimates of uh, standard deviation uh, should be uh, positive uh, positive valued so the answer is uh, uh, this uh, uh, sir one question yes सर एक्चुअली आई आई क्वेश्चन इज़ इट वाज़ सेड दैट एस्टीमेट्स स्टैंडर्ड एस्टिमेट इज स्टैटिस्टिक नॉट एस्टीमेट सो व्हाई द द थर्ड ऑफ फोर्थ ऑप्शन इज सिलेक्टेड मीन कैन बी स्टैटिस्टिक और एस्टिमेट और the options there are the four options uh, in that case the third option was the mean can be statistic or estimate and the fourth option also the standard deviation can be statistic or estimate in that case uh, where it was uh, written that the standard deviation only be statistic not to be estimate mm. yeah the the um, this question there was oh, that question and this question uh that question and this question are different here it says all estimates of standard deviation it's not saying that standard deviation is an estimate oh uh, yeah maybe i have to check so yeah maybe will you uh, will uh, you just keep this question for uh, like uh, maybe i'll uh, put that in the comment section in the i'll uh, change whatever the slide is i'll just go through it and i'll uh, just change it again uh, so uh, question number 4 um, w- uh, what is usually reported after parameter estimation exercise value of the estimate upper bound of the parameter standard deviation of the estimate difference between the estimate and the true value so uh, you are doing the parameter estimation so obviously you will find out the value of the estimate and you will do the standard devi- uh, you will find out you will report the standard deviation also you will like if you are reporting the population so the population is um, 10 crores the standard deviation can be plus or minus 1 so that is the called as the standard deviation so the population of town a will be 10 crores or plus or minus 1 
so that is called as the parameter of estimation so you will get the value of the estimate and you will also give the um, standard deviation that is the usually reported value after the parameter estimation is played the signal to noise ratios for two different sets d1 and d2 obtained for a process under identical operating conditions are um, 2500 uh, uh, 2500 respectively then which of the following is are true error in parameter estimates obtained from the data sets will be approximately in the ratio 4 to 1 the signal amplitude of d2 is two times higher than d1 noise is uh, of a larger power d1 than uh, in d1 than in d2 estimates uh, obtained from d1 will have larger uncertainty than those with uh, d2 so the answer is uh, uh, d 3 uh, uh, c and d so basically when you have a signal to noise ratio uh, in of uh, 25 and signal to noise ratio of 100 so basically you will see that um, there uh, the noise will be of larger power in d1 so basically uh, so signal is in the numerator and uh, the noise is in the, the denominator so uh, because the denominator is higher you will see the value of the fraction and signal to noise ratio is 25 so because the denominator is lower so noise is lower in d2 that is why the the you what you are getting the uh, signal to noise ratio is higher so that is why noise is of larger power in d1 than in d2 and again since the noise is higher in uh, d1 the estimates obtained from d1 will also have higher un uncertainty compared to those of d2 i hope i'm clear any questions um, we'll move to the next question um which of the following is true concerning bias in parameter estimates it is maximum possible difference between the estimate and the true value an estimator is said to have zero bias if the average estimates across all possible experimental records is equal to the true value a non zero bias implies systematic error in the estimation the bias of a bias estimator can uh, decrease with the sample size so the answer is um Uh, b c and d so basically um and is uh, bias is basically uh, like um something like uh, they uh, if the sample size is high so what happens is when the sam uh, sample size is low uh, the person will think okay if uh, per se if you have only um uh, so just an example if you meet only one person uh, who is uh, so Who, uh, from a particular community who eats uh, only vegetarian so you will think that uh, the entire community eats only vegetarian food but when you uh, eat uh, mo uh, when you meet more number of people from that community you will find out that okay there you know, even in that community people eat veg and non veg so that is kind of thing so like uh, when the sample size increases uh, your bias will be zero so uh, there is uh, when there is uh, like uh, a non zero bi uh, bias there will be like there is some systematic er error in, in the estimation and like if the uh, average of all the estimates uh, is equal to the true value the it is said to be like there is zero bias so that is the answer so uh, we'll move to the question number 7 the measurements of two oscillatory signal xk sin 2 uh, omega not k and y uh, cos 2 omega not k are obtained using two different uh, sensors s1 and s2 over time interval then identify the correct statement uh, some of the readings xk and uh, x uh, yk is always necessarily unity the measurements from uh, s1 and s2 are always non negative uh, valued Uh, when connected to an oscillatory detector that is spectrometer it will show that uh, xk uh, to have fre uh, frequency uh, 2 omega not measurements from xk can be used to estimate the readings of yk if the sensor uh, s2 fails S uh, so the answer is uh, c uh, since um, the uh, it is uh, sin 2 theta and cos 2 theta it is not uh, like uh, uh, um No, uh, not necessarily unity again uh, sine sine wave and cos wave both have a negative uh, like uh, negative zones so it will uh, have negative values also and uh, since uh, one is detecting a sine wave you cannot use the, uh, it for estimating the cos wave so uh, you cannot use it only you can co uh, connect with the spectrometer and you can find out the frequency so only option c uh, is correct um 
so going to question number eight, which is uh, which of the following is true in estimation? Errors in parameter estimates are usually inversely proportional to the sample size. The true value of a parameter can never be obtained from a finite number of measurements. Uh, curve fitting is always best done by least square methods. Parameter estimates can uh, rarely be zero valued. So the answer is uh, uh, the A, uh, A, B, and uh, D. So errors in estimate are usually inversely proportional to the sample size. So the more the sample size, your errors will be uh, error in estimation will be lower. Again, um, um, true value of parameters can uh, never be. Uh, so basically, this is a uh, like about error. So if you have infinite number of uh, uh, parameters, you will uh, you will be uh, more closer to the um, uh, true value. So that is what uh, that means. And parameter estimates can uh, rarely be zero valued. Uh, yeah, it means uh, obviously when you are estimating, it is uh, rare that it can be zero value, but it can also be zero value. It is that's why the word is called uh, rarely. So for curve fitting, there are various other methods. So least square method is not the best. So there are various other methods uh, you have been taught in the lecture. So uh, that is the thing. You, you should you, there are various other methods that can be done. So moving to question number nine. Identify the correct statement following uh, with respect to a non-linear function y is uh, equal to f of x. The function f of x should necessarily have quadratic or higher uh, higher powers of x. Uh, the first order linear approximation of a non-linear uh, model using Taylor's series expansion involves only first der order derivatives of f x. For uh, the sum values of uh, x. The non-linear function and its linear approximation can be identical. Estimating f x from data is only possible if at least three points are available. So the answer is uh, B and C. So first order uh, uh, appro uh, approximation for uh, Taylor equation. So uh, Taylor expansion series you might be uh, knowing. If you don't know, please go through. Uh, please have a look at the expansion uh, series. So basically, uh, uh, it involves uh, more uh, more than first order derivative. It also involves like one one by two square uh, f uh, double dash. Then uh, it goes on the the Taylor series uh, goes on. So uh, it uh, uh, for uh, you you need not only have the first order derivatives, and uh, for some values uh, the non-linear function and the linear function can uh, be identical. Yes, this is possible. Uh, uh like uh, this is uh, not possible so like uh, for uh, uh, linear uh, uh, yeah, when you are having a non linear function uh, it is not possible that um, the the approximate values uh, it is ideal so uh, that can only happen for zero but for positive values it is uh, highly unlikely so uh, the answer is b and uh, c uh, which of the following is true concerning empirical uh, data driven and first principle models the first principle models can never be linear whereas data driven models can always be forced to be linear empirical models usually have better interpolation capabilities uh, than extrapolation it is uh, it takes more uh, at least 100 observation to obtain a reliable empirical model involving two parameters uh, the parameters of a first principle model have to be necessarily obtained through experiments so the answer is uh, B, C, and uh, D. Empirical models uh, are usually uh, good at interpolation than extrapolation. So basically, within that interval, you can uh, do uh, better than uh, like going outside the interval. Again, uh, at least uh, 100 observations you are needed to get a reliable empirical model involving two parameters. So that is something which is true. And um, parameters of first principle models have to be necessarily obtained through experiment. So um, these questions were uh, given in the lecture. Uh, these ob um, these things were said by the instructor in the uh, lectures. So this is an important point to understand that you should actually go through the lecture slides again before the exam. So any questions regarding the uh, week uh, till week three? So I hope there is no uh, no question
so we'll move to the week 4 um while working with the uh, with electricity only the voltage poses a danger to the user uh true or false the answer is false uh, current and voltage both pose the danger uh again it is important to tailor the complexity of uh, same presentation to suit the needs of different audience uh, so that's true or false yes uh, sri lakshmi you have raised the hand you can unmute yourself and ask madam madam you have raised the hand you can unmute yourself and ask I think there uh, there has been some problem with uh, madam's uh, uh, voice. Madam, you can uh, unmute whenever you are uh, free. Uh, I'll uh, continue with the. So, is it important to tailor the complexity of the same presentation to suit the needs of the different audience? The answer is true. Obviously, when you are presenting to a set of doctors and you are presenting to a set of engineers, even though your uh, research might be in the uh, field of implants. um you need to like tailor the um, presentations and the complexity so this is very important um the language used in technical document must seem to com- to be complex uh, to convey the importance of the work uh so basically this is false obviously if you use a very complex language uh, the other person might not understand it and uh, it will never be able to convey so basically your aim for when you are writing a technical document is to communicate is to communicate to the person without actually being able to do it uh, through non verbal communication so basically in when you are actually doing some presentation or something you have the option to have some non verbal cues but in case of uh, technical documents it should be even more simple the language should be even more simple because you don't even have the uh, non verbal cues to uh, g- uh, give to the reader so the uh, language has to be uh, more simple actually rather than complex the pace of presentation should be uh, fast to convey the large amount of work carried out so the answer is obviously false it should be uh, the pace should be uh slow so that other people are also uh, able to follow it um so question number 5 regular prescription glasses is sufficient for eye protection obviously it is false so uh, we have all seen the eye protection glasses have a side protection also uh, so basically they uh, they are designed in such a way that no none of the particle is able to reach the eye because eye is one of the most important uh, tissue in your body so that is basically it doesn't self uh, regenerate so although the cornea regenerates but if something happens to uh, the regeneration capability is very limited for eye so uh, that that is why uh, like the eye protection equipment is very like specific and um, the it has uh, uh, the regular prescription glasses won't work so we'll uh, move with uh, the question uh, practice uh, previous year assignment 4 wet hands is a safety hazards while running any experiment or operating any equipment that uses electricity the answer is true obviously uh, if you are having wet hands there ca- you can uh, experience shock so uh, it is a uh, problem while using pressurized gas bottles it is necessary to secure them using a chain close to the base of the uh, bottle in order to prevent toppling uh the answer is false the when you are using pressurized gas bottles the you have to chain them at the top not close to the base if you uh, uh, like clo- uh, uh, chain them close to the base it can still topple right it has to be like chained at the top and at the middle and at the bottom so that uh, depend uh, every lab has their own uh, protocols in how they do it but uh, usually uh, we have like one chain at the top and uh, at the bottom also we have one like protection kind of thing but every lab has different things so um that is uh, uh, uh completely up to the lab but it has to be secured at the top not at the uh, not close to the base uh eye protection requires shatter resistant glasses that also provide shielding to the side uh, sides of the eye so yes uh, it is true so as you can see the eye protection has to be shatter resistant it should not 
damage your eye so and it should also protect the sides of the eye so th- not even a single particle should actually reach your eye um when you are doing any experiment so that is what the purpose of eye protection equipment are so moving to the question number 4 while making illustrations for the use in document one should always aim to maximize the amount of detail shown so obviously illustrations um is uh, very important but if you uh, try to maximize the amount of uh, detail uh, you may not uh, like it will not uh, sometimes it may become a khichdi like it will become uh, like um, very confusing so maybe you can have more than one illustration but it should not be like you should uh, in one docu- uh, one illustration you put uh, all the data so you should try to like make the illustration simple so that anyone can understand it should not be a, like a kitty uh, kind of thing um so uh, moving to question number 5 the language used in te- uh, technical document must aim to avoid ambiguity so obviously if the uh, document are ambiguous Uh, the person might not be und- able to understand uh, your uh, your like what you want to um, give in uh, like uh, with very high specificity so like if they just say uh, if your mobile uh, company just says uh, press the button on your uh, uh, mobile phone uh, you have two volume button and one power button so then how will you be able to understand which is the power button and which is the uh, volume button so obviously when you see the technical documents they are highly specific and the aim is to avoid ambiguity uh, at all costs so um the answer is true then uh, moving to question number 6 it is useful to use phrases uh, such as it is obvious to help emphasize the result so the answer is false uh in science basically when uh, especially in uh, like f- uh, physical sciences like um, physics chemistry uh there is nothing obvious it can be like it is it seems to be the case it is you cannot definitively say that it is obvious so always in uh, sci- there are uh, there uh, there have been papers where the reviewers will uh, actually send your paper uh, you they'll give a high, uh, harsh comment if you put uh, words like obvious so uh, it should always be uh, important to know that uh, even in future that uh, you should not use words such as obvious in your uh, results and discussion section of your um, paper uh, question number 7 a good scientific presentation does not require to be modified for different audiences obviously the answer is false uh, depending on the audience a good scientific presentation has to be modified uh, so that the uh, the impact is higher so that people are able to understand it um, so question uh, moving to question number 8 scientific documents aim to inform the readers in an efficient manner uh, true or false obviously it is true so scientific documents are designed so that the reader is able to grasp a lo- uh, lot of knowledge in a very efficient manner so they are designed in such a way uh, so nowadays there are even journals which are uh, going for video um, like they are asking video uh, um, paper so they are asking the uh, p- uh, researchers so rather than going for uh, like uh, writing the re- research articles they are asking to make the videos uh, with all the like all the data so from uh, what you find on youtube uh, the journals are asking the like few journals have started making that so you have to make the video um, research paper so maybe when you are uh, many of you might be in your uh, like when you are uh, in your uh, phd you may uh, find this kind of uh, you may uh, have to make the video as well so uh, that is something which you need to know um, the pace of presentation both in terms of number of slides per minute as well as the pace of talking must allow the audience enough time to absorb the details of the work being presented true or false obviously the answer is true uh, the, well, the speaker should uh, keep the pace such that the audience is able to understand um, and absorb uh what whatever is going on uh, so i was also today also i was prodded uh, for uh, speaking too fast so it is very important that the pace is uh, proper um moving to question number 10 it is important to complete a technical presentation with summary of main points of the presentation uh yes uh, it is true 
Yahoo. So basically, all the big speakers, if you actually attend uh, the lectures of uh, professors on even on MIT, OCW, or anywhere, if you actually uh, see, uh, all the good professors will always have the uh, a summary slide at the end of their lecture. So. it is very important to have a summary slide at the end of the presentation and a agenda slide at the start so these are the two things which uh, which makes the difference so many uh, like uh, if you go through the slides of um, go through the lectures of um, like reputed professors you will always see that uh, there is a agenda slide in the end uh, in the start and the uh, uh, summary slide in the end so that is uh, there so any questions with the week 4 excuse me sir yeah sorry for being late joining will we get the recording of this also no yeah 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 sure you will get the recording you will get the ppt also tomorrow i will upload it everything so we are not doing anything uh, new i am just uh, okay. doing all the uh, questions in uh, in uh, like one go so that if you do uh, do this on this much questions you will get at least uh some your all the assignments will be covered then only you need to do this year assignment uh the recorded uh, lectures and uh, uh and just uh, read the questions properly so now with this uh, so now for your saturday uh, till saturday all you have to do is um this uh, uh go through the pdf don't uh, uh, go for this video video is anyway uh, there is nothing much so go through the pdf Uh, go through this year's assignment and go through the uh, main videos of the lectures of the professor the lectures are there go through those that will be enough uh, by saturday you, you will be able to cover everything so uh, go through the pdfs of this lecture uh, go through this year's assignment and uh, go through the uh, professor's videos which uh, which are uh, sir like we are, if we are not able to go for the videos will the this year assignments and all the like pdf questions and all the like uh, um uh, assignments which we are doing it in pdf this is will enough for the upcoming test so you might pass but if you want to score very high uh, you will have to go through the videos go also. for the videos also yeah you will oh, pass is it very uh, and is it is very compulsory that we have to uh, like uh, um watch all the videos for the paper to be qualified nothing as a serious wala to nahi hai like we have to go for all the videos so my suggestion is go for week 7 week 7 uh, there is a lot of thing in the videos uh ha uh, week 7 is like go research in all the areas right no no no, no that is week 8 week 7 is okay. all the hypothesis testing the uh, statistical part that is there so you have to go through that so that is very important Uh, okay so i would suggest week 7 as the first priority week 8 you keep for the last week 1 you keep for the last so week 2 okay. to week 6 uh, week 7 you do it and uh. week 7 you do it maybe two or three times may uh, that is very okay. important so, that is very important as per you right yeah so uh, week 7 uh, uh, sri lakshmi madam can you share uh, your was can you share the eight links related to the assignment practice kindly share uh, which uh, links uh, are you asking madam I don't know, madam. Uh, like, and Ali, Ali, Ali Mohammed. For the sir, re- for the request you, sir, to please, uh, like, uh, upload these slides today also. Yeah. Uh, today or even by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, I will upload the video also. So the slide okay. I will upload now only. I will upload after uh, seven. Once the uh, session okay. is done, I will upload it. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, re- recorded links uh, madam they are, they are all there in the if you go through the nptel page on the right side there is a recorded session uh, so uh, so the problem solving session there will be one uh, tab called as problem solving session if you go there there will be recordings you will find uh, f- find all the recordings madam the, the it is uh, just uh, if you go on your nptel page you will find them um, it's uh, it will be at the top left Hey, at the bo- uh, bottom of the le- uh, left side, uh, Ali Mohammed, uh, where can I get them, sir? Uh, so, what are you asking, sir? Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, Sophia George, madam, you have uh, um, like uh, uh, raise your hand. You can unmute yourself and ask your question, madam.
Sophia George, madam, uh, you can just ask your question. Uh, else, we'll move to the. Uh, uh, so next. Good evening, sir. Yeah, yeah, good evening. Sir, actually, in the problem session, uh, solving session, uh, there are uh, two links, no, sir. One is by Sindhu, madam, and second one yeah, is yeah, by yeah. you. Okay, sir. I have gone through that one. So in the second link, uh, uh, all the questions are like uh, uh, some questions are uh, met with that practice assignments, but remaining two are false. What? What are those questions, sir? What? Uh, I didn't understand your. Sir, point. actually, in the problem solving session, two two links are there, no, sir, for every week. Yeah, yeah, madam. One is by Sindhu, madam, and another one yeah, is by you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. So in that one, uh, so I have gone through the bits actually. So in that one, some true or false. Some 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 links are showing that one practice assignment. Yeah. But remaining questions are from where? Or so these are actually means? previous year questions. So these are uh, these questions were asked in the previous year assignments. So you won't have access to these questions. So we are actually suppose this session is supposed to give you an idea of previous year assignments. So we'll we are solving the previous year assignments so that you are able to solve this year assignment. So this was the main aim for this session. So now today's session is basically we'll solve all the previous year assignment and again you you will uh, you will solve this year assignment. And you will be able to score well in the exam. So that is the major aim of this uh, session, per se. Okay, sir. Sir, actually, we joined late as we requested on yesterday, like uh, conduct the session from six to eight, but you started at five to seven. No, sir, I have no option possible, because uh, um, I have no one, like NPTEL. Just uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So after that, if it is possible, once. Uh, Uh, like in a fast manner, you please uh, show me everything. Just yeah. for ten minutes, last ten minutes. Like yeah, yeah, sure, possible. sure, sure. I'll do it for everyone. So uh, that Thank that we will do it. Uh, else, yeah, the PPT will uh, be uploaded uh, very soon. So you need not worry about that also. so the ppt will be uploaded very soon so uh, mr sarkar you had asked about the negative marking so the uh, neg uh, negative marking um, uh, will not be there the, there is uh, like nptel none of the exam i have seen negative marking so negative marking you need not worry about that uh, so that you can be very uh, uh, uh like you you can be relaxed about that uh, so now uh, there are some exam related questions so i'll just give you once and for all i'm as answering uh, these questions so because uh, we'll have to finish the other uh, like problems also so one thing uh, the number of questions in the exam is not i uh, the, we cannot tell you but it will be uh, like uh, you can uh, expect like uh, not more than like uh, 100 questions so it will be within 100 questions you can have even 70 questions you can have even 50 questions and the question uh, you will have 3 uh, hours so it will be very easy to complete all the questions it is it will be like uh, you you will be done within one and a half hour but you have 3 3 hours so as even if there are uh, too many questions coming there is no worries and uh, more questions come the weightage for every question will be less so it will be easier for you only uh, in the end because even if you make one question wrong you will not lose too many marks so that is there and um, uh for the exam as i said go go through uh, today's pdf uh, go through this year's uh, assignments and then go through the videos and i told uh, now also so you make and you, you can skip uh, week 1 and week 8 uh start from week 7 and uh, do week 2 3 4 5 uh, 6 so week 7 is very important uh, week 1 and week 8 skip the videos okay so i hope i have given uh, most of the things that are, that are re required for the exam uh, exam date obviously it is confirmed uh, and uh, the assignment minimum percentage you have to uh, yeah, the, the top 6 will be taken and the average should be 10 uh, 10 marks to pass so it has uh, i have given it uh, in uh, the in the start i will again uh, will i'll tell you but uh, the uh, assignments you need uh, you have to 
uh, top six uh, assignments uh, the average will be taken and uh, it will be uh, 10 marks you need to pass so if uh, i hope i have answered all the questions right now we are going to go on the next huh ये उस पूछे वो लेने आप दे दे कहाँ किन्तु पढ़ चुके हैं ना पढ़ी पोटर आया याद है वन पोयम पढ़ी चीज़ रहा हूँ अमर थ्री लाइन रिक्वेस्ट यू टू काइंडली म्यूट योरसेल्फ सर मैम सोफिया मैम सो वील मूव टू द कंटिन्यू सर प्लीज yeah we'll move to question number uh, week 5 according to stenberg theories of intelli uh, intelligence uh, practical uh, practical intelligence relates to how one relates to uh, environment around them how street smart they are how well they come up with the new theories and how well they so kindly change the slide also it's uh, change oh shit sir uh, request to change yeah, the yeah. slide yeah there Thank is some you. problem here yeah, yeah. there is some problem with the connection again uh, so is it visible now Yes, sir. Yeah. So we we'll just move fast. According to Stenberg, theories of intelligence, practical intelligence re relates to how one relates to the environment around them, how street smart they are, how well they come up with the new theories, how well they solve the new problems. So basically, there are three types of intelligence: analytical intelligence, creative intelligence, practical intelligence. So analytical is mainly for um, academic problem solving and computation. Creative is how imaginative is there. These people. So the, these are uh, like creative intelligence is mainly related to like uh, the how creative uh, this film line or something like that practical intelligence how street smart and common sense it is uh, they are so basically according to stenberg theory intelligence uh, uh, practical uh, practical intelligence relates to how well you relate to the environment and how um, um, street smart the person is Smart. Yeah. So the Ethel aspects go on. Which of the following areas? How research is funded? How research is carried out? How research is reported? How and what information is shared? So basically, the answer is all of the above. So uh, ethics basically covers the. Sir, kindly change the slide. Not able to see the slides or second slide. So go for the second slide. It's still one slide is showing on. there will there is some lag i think so now done done sir so ethical aspect basically it covers everything how the research is funded how it is carried out how it is reported and what information is shared so it covers everything uh, so what uh, which the following can be attributed to a fully professional researcher they have some fundamental concepts that their peers uh international peers might be uh, interested in they have command over their area they are aware of the situation where they can make significant contribution they work with uh, without focusing on sir again again the same issue so 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 again the same issue please change the slide i have actually changed the slide uh, there is some lag actually there is a lag of around <laughs> but i think so ha i can make it sound there is some lag um, it's stuck so, on the slide number 2 only okay so uh, yes it's on question 2 only there is some lag am i sir just close the slide once and then uh, start up maybe there will be a like refresh will be kind of come up i'll just stop the presentation and i'll wait it's stuck in uh, slide number 2 yeah, yeah, only no question number 2 There is some lag with the internet. So now is it fine? Question number three. Yes, sir. Yes, done. The following can be attributed to a fully professional researcher. They have fundamental concepts that their peers, international, might be interested in. They have command over their area. they are aware of the situation where they can make significant contribution and they work without focusing on literature in the area so obviously a uh, good researcher will never uh, like uh, uh, like leave uh, literature aside so literature is the very important thing even big big professors i have seen um, like there are professors in top universities they still have uh, time on their uh, ca uh, calendar in which they do literature survey so it is very important literature survey they have am i sir i think so a lot of network issue is from your side again the slides are not visible and your voice is also glitched now fine again 
Fine, sir. Now it is fine. It's visible now. There, there might be some lag. I, I'm trying to because I'm on college Wi-Fi only, but still there is some problem. I don't know. Um, In between, your voice is also like glitches. Okay, okay. Um. So anyway, the uh, video will be uh, the recording will be uploaded. If there is any problem right now, you can just leave the session and you can uh, mm. go go through the uh, recording again. Mm. I don't want you to waste your time. So there is some problem with the Institute Wi-Fi. Everyone is having the problem. I, I can see in the group. So if there is any problem, uh, you can all just leave the session. I will upload the recording uh, with all the uh, slides, all the questions. Uh, I'll upload it uh, yeah, by tomorrow morning. So I'll I'll make the recording myself and. I'll uh, go through it. So, if there is any problem right now, uh, you can just leave the session because uh, everyone in the group is saying there is some problem with the internet. So, I'm also uh, like there is some problem. So, again, so we'll continue till where wherever we can go. So, few research scholars collaborated on some specific area. They generated some data and analyzed the results. Some of them published the results independently since they were forced to type it up. Is it ethical to do so? Yes, because they collaborated and know each other. No, all authors should know and agree with the publication. If the collaborators are junior, yes. If the collaborators are junior to you, no. Only if the authors are senior to you. So the answer is no. Uh, every publication. So basically, uh, the author should agree and know uh, to that publication. So nowadays, even uh, just two days before I submitted one paper. So um, when you submit the paper. the mail will go to the other co-authors so uh, basically uh, we, uh, when we submit the paper the the mail will go to other co-authors to confirm their uh, submission so only after they confirm their authorship is when the uh, the journal uh, goes ahead with the review process so it has now become very clear uh, very important that everyone uh, agree with the publication and should know the publication so uh question number 5 uh, where can uh, we can work the be- to our best potential when we are hypo stress u stress hyper stress distress so the answer is uh, uh, so obviously um, like u stress is basically good uh, there are four types of stresses so there is u uh, stress where uh, it's a good stress that motivates you towards a productive actions uh, distress is basically bad stress or pathological form of stress um hypo stress or is a low level of stress and uh, hyper stress is the basically high level of stress so basically what? still it is in question number 4 sir the slide yeah is yes uh, yeah madam uh, so there is excuse me ma'am actually there is a delay with the connectivity i think we should have patience to wait for some time when sir is moving on this is keep on uh, the same issues and uh, actually the lots of time is getting yeah so uh, so that's what i'm suggesting so if there is a problem if you are facing any problems you can just uh, and uh, you can just uh, leave from the session because uh, i'll upload the uh, recording anyway and the recording will have proper things so uh, don't worry about it uh, so there is a like uh, the campus wide uh, internet connectivity is there is issue so i can i can't help you in uh, in that sense so i'm really sorry for the inconvenience but uh, like this is the scenario sorry for that uh, so the is any can now you can you now see question number 5 uh, so we uh, we can work to the yes, best sir. Yeah, yeah we can work to the best of our potential when we are hypo stress u stress hyper stress distress so there are basically four types of stresses u stress distress hyper stress hypo stress so basically u stress is good stress that motivates you uh, distress is basically the bad stress or pathological form of stress then there is hypo stress so that is low level of stress and hyper stress that is low uh, high level of stress so basically you need to be in the to work at the best of the potential you should have good stress right so basically the answer is u stress so you should know all the four types of stresses so uh, they can play around with uh, the others so in this slides we have the four type of stresses so maybe you can take a screenshot or you can uh, write it down so just uh, they can play around with this but they uh, they might ask one question about it so um again this is uh, assignment number 5 is a very simple one um um 
uh, this is completely true or false i think we can skip uh, skip through it because it's uh, it is very basic uh, if you want i'll just go through it very fast um, uh, is it fine because we uh, we are uh, short of time so we'll just uh, uh, skip uh, skip the assignment number 5 uh, the previous year assignment so basically this is very simple so the first question is basically there is limited scope for creativity in uh, science fiction since it is based on science so the answer is false science fiction is basically it's fiction it is created by somebody it is uh, the other uh, scope for creativity is basically unlimited uh, so again getting a phd means you gain a broad knowledge over a wide range of topics again it's false uh, it is basically you narrow down you uh, it's uh, phd is like a funnel you narrow down to uh, certain uh, topics and you get uh, like uh, you gain knowledge of a very, very specific area again uh, question number 3 people who accurately copy others people work are generally considered as creative obviously it's a false uh, people who uh, uh, are creative basically come up with their novel things so uh, that is there so question number 4 uh, creative people are ready, uh, readily question conventional thinking uh, the answer is false uh, uh, answer is true obviously creative people uh, question so be uh, one of the basic person who uh, who did this one of the greatest creative minds in the century is leonardo da vinci uh, so uh, so who made a mona lisa but he also came up with m various other theories in astronomy as well so uh, like uh, um, uh, the creative people obviously have readily questioned the conventional thinking uh, common uh, factor most successful peop uh, peop uh, among most successful people is hard work obviously it's true uh, uh, it's again it's a controversial question people might say it is smart work uh, but again uh, in uh, our context we are saying it is true great work does not always need a uh, conducive environment uh, true uh, there are many people who have um, done great work in a very hostile environment as well so great work does not always need a conducive environment um, quality of a researcher is based on the recognition of lo local neighborhood of the researcher false obviously the researcher uh, the quality depends on the recognition by the international research community not just the local uh, your local area so it is very important and confidentiality is uh, very important aspect associated with ethics concerning data from people obviously it is very true so when you are having a data from people the confidentiality is of the utmost importance uh, the data has to uh, data confidentiality is a very important thing if their confidentiality is not maintained your career can be in uh, problem informed consent is not necessarily for testing medicine on not necessary for uh, testing medicines on patients where likely benefit uh, to society is high uh, the answer is ob uh, false even when the covid 19 vaccine was being made uh, the informed testing uh, informed consent was done so only those who uh, had a proper consent were uh, uh, administered with the um, like te uh, test vaccines so informed consent is alway always necessary uh, question 10 it is believed that uh, 10,000 hours of practice is required to become an expert in any field the answer is true uh, like it is uh, very important uh, 10,000 10, hours is considered as the minimum requisite to So this uh, we'll uh, uh, go through this. Um, so uh, now again, this from week week six and week seven are very important. So uh, we'll skip week eight today because it was very simple yesterday only we did it. So week six and week seven we'll be doing it uh, like uh, in detail. So please keep in mind. So basically, intellectual property you need to understand. There are three types of intellectual property. One is patent, one is tra uh, trademark or word mark, and uh, the last is design. So all these three are uh, important and you should uh, maybe uh, study for your exam also. So idea that distinguishes an intellectual property and real property is uh, basically real property has um, physical boundaries. Intellectual property uh, does not have physical boundary. It has like uh, intellectual. Uh, it is it is not a physical uh, um, like thing per se. Um, which of the following fall in the property of uh, intellectual property and original set of ideas or research results ideas originating from research uh, real property properties emanating from human creativity and labor all of the above uh, so the answer is um, the original set of ideas or uh, research results 
properties emanating from human creativity and labor so these are considered as intellectual property uh, registration of works is important because this is the form by which intellectual property is protected we get to know what the right holder has claimed uh, all uh, this is the process through which the intellectual property uh, rights are recognized so the answer is all of the above um, uh, so violations of intellectual property right, rights uh, leads to uh, infringement ca casual penalty no big deal as we have license to fundamental rights to uh, li license of fundamental rights to do whatever we want to the answer is infringement and casual penalty so when you do any infringement patent infringe uh, violation of intellectual property rights you get sued for patent infringement and also you will be uh, have to pay the uh, fines that is the casual penalties um, which of the following intellectual property has an unlimited life trademark patent uh, copyright uh, all of the above so the answer is trademark so patent has a life of 20 to uh, 20 or 25 years depending on the which country you are doing it uh, copyright uh, is basically the uh, life of the author plus 60 years trademark basically first time they give you for 10 years and after that it, it can be uh, like uh, extended for the unlimited period of time uh, like the trademark such as coca cola pepsi and all those things so they, they are unlimited so no, even uh, even though the re they were registered in 1900s uh, they they still uh, are uh, in the come under the intellectual property rights so what does an ip right entitle a person right to file a suit in case of infringement right right to excludability right to commercial exploitation all of the above so the answer is all of the above uh, Daisy invents an umbrella that could be folded six times and easily put into dress pocket or a handbag. Which of the following IP right is the most appropriate in uh, protecting the no novel invention? Copyrights, patents, trademarks, trade secret. So basically it comes under the patent uh, because uh, you are uh, having a physical object which you are doing. So it comes under the patent. Michael Fay has designed a uniquely shaped walker for his friend Johnny English. Uh, which can be collapsed uh, with the aid of two levers also uh, used as a chair uh, Michael plans to commercially produce his design under the name Geoffrey Stroller uh, which of the following types of intellectual properties would most likely apply to Michael's creation patent uh, copyright trademark patent trademark industrial design uh, trademark industrial design trade secret copyright uh, trademark and uh, industrial design so basically obviously it's a patent it, it is a new idea which he's doing so it is uh, a patent uh, there is a design angle to it so there are two uh, it has a design which can be collapsible with the two uh, levers so it comes under the industrial design and there is a name under which he wants to sell that is the joe Frey stroller so it comes under the trademark as well which of the following is the full form of trips so basically uh, tra uh, trade related aspect of intellectual property rights so trips full form is very important you need to uh, find out uh, you need to keep in mind Patent law provides the owner of the patent the right to use only, make, sell, use, offer for sale and or export, uh, um, only to make uh, and um, offer for sale, uh, make, use, offer for sale or import. So the answer is uh, make, sell, use, of, uh, offer for sale or export. Um, so uh, question number six, the Reebok Delta symbol and Hyundai logos are protected by patents, trademark, trade dress, ge geographical indicators. So the answer is trademarks. So uh, patents are obviously ab about some concepts uh, like ideas or something like that. Trademarks is uh, like the logos and everything. And geographical indicators are basically for like uh, uh, coffee, tea and all those things for uh, those things, uh, geographical indicators because they are specific to that specific geography. That is it. Which of the following is not a remedy for infringement of intellectual property, damages, injunction, accounts of profit, specific performance? So the answer is specific performance. Um, when you are, uh, there is an infringement, you can ask for damages, you can sp seek injunction. Injunction is basically you stop that person from doing that work again uh, for now. So injunction is basically you uh, press a pause button. Accounts for profit is basically all the profit that the person has done from uh, your intellectual property he, uh, that person is liable to pay it to you which of the following statement is true with respect to industrial designs it protects the ornamental and aesthetic aspect of an article in india the maximum term of protection is 15 years uh, industrial design protects uh, both three-dimensional and two-dimensional features of the products 
all of the above are true the answer is all of the above are true the industrial design basically is about the aesthetic aspect so uh, when you have a car if you look at any car the car will have uh, specific curves if you look at uh, like uh, any uh, car it will have specific curves it will have a specific um like handle design it will have everything that uh, or the front grille design so everything uh, all those ornamental and aesthetic aspect of that article come under uh, the industrial design um it covers uh, both three dimensional and two dimensional features so it covers every uh, like uh, three dimensional like uh, the curves and uh, those things but also something like flat surfaces and all those things that also is covered under um, industrial design and the maximum term of protection is 15 years so moving to question number 9 which of the following uh, which of uh, what is the duration of copyright protection uh, pankaj mishra can seek in india for his non fiction book in the age of anger a history of the present only dur- uh, during the lifetime of pankaj mishra lifetime of pankaj mishra plus uh, 60 years after his death pankaj mishra or his legal heirs can seek the copyright protection uh, of her work for perpetuity non fiction cannot be protected so the answer is lifetime of pankaj mishra plus 60 years so basically lifetime of the author plus 60 years after his death uh, is for uh, copyrights under the patent act 1970 the person is entitled to receive a patent on new invention is the person who created the invented the in- invention first who commercialized the invention first who thought of the invention first the person who filed the patent application first so basically it is um to uh, like uh, to p- avoid any dispute the rule is same the person who files the patent first uh, gets the patent so that is how it works uh, so um i hope week 6 content is also clear so um, now we are moving to week 7 content the scope of hypothesis te- uh, testing concerns with uh, parameter of probability distribution of a population parameters of probability distribution of a sample uh it relies with uh, data contained in the sample taken from the population of interest um all of the above so the answer is uh, uh parameters of probability distribution of the sample uh so um, the uh, entire sample hypothesis testing is concerned with it also relies on data taken from the sample uh, from from the uh, population of interest so it uh, uh, when you take a population of interest you do the hypothesis testing basically uh question number 2 a normal probability distribution function is symmetric around the standard deviation mean standard deviation into mean or standard deviation minus the mean so here you can see the standard uh, a normal distribution curve it is a uh, like a bell curve so the stand, uh, so the center is the mean uh, and the standard deviation is uh, the width of the curve basically so this is how you uh, how the uh, it looks like uh the no- normal distribution curve looks like and it is symmetric about the mean axis um coefficient of determination is said to be unity when the error sum of squares is zero the total sum of squares is zero the regression sum of square is zero the regression sum of square is uh, the same as total sum of square uh so this question obviously it will, uh, there is some problem with it so you can see the this is the formulas for um, error uh, for r square so the it um this question is basically wrong and uh, b- but these are the formulas you need to understand so please uh, make a note of this formula so that question was wrong i have uh, raised the query but i have not got any answer so you have to uh, ignore that question but uh, this is the um, uh, for, uh, uh, formula you need to know a probability distribution function describes the following probability of a phenomena occurring in a macro scale probability of phenomena occurring in the micro scale distribution of probabilities in a continuous random variable domain distribution of probabilities of in some particular set of undefined variable so the answer is uh, so basically probability distribution function basically you have on the um, so you have the um, uh, so if you take the area under this curve so you have this probability distribution function if you take area under this curve between a and b uh you will find the uh, like the probability of some uh, so, uh, of a certain event uh lying between those two variables so basically uh, probability distribution function is um like uh, distribution of probabilities in a continuous random variable domain um so uh 
now moving to the question number 5 during uh, response surface methodology canonical analysis involves two factor maximum response is said to be achieved when the eigen values of the matrix are all positive all negative all zero or such that uh, one is positive and the other is negative so this is uh, directly from the slides uh, so basically you first uh, uh, put uh, get this matrices then you check whether the uh, you check the eigen values of the matrices and um, you just uh, if it is uh, negative uh, then the stationary point is at, uh, if it is positive it is at minimum if it is negative it is at maximum so this is all you need to know about the surface response uh, um, surface methodology is canon canonical analysis so this is the only things you need to know about it um, from that video so during surface uh, Uh, so the answer is uh, all negative so moving to the previous year assignment 7 uh, so when uh, two random variables x and y are uh, are independent then the expected value of ex may be found from the expected value of ey and exy in the following manner so these are the uh, four equations which are given so the relation basically there is a law of expectation in which gives like expectation of x and y is equal to expectation of x into expectation of y expectation of x plus y is equal to expectation of x plus expectation of uh, y so from this we know um, so these are the two equations you need to by heart so uh, by um, find uh, from this uh, we can find out that since e, e of x uh, y is equal to e of x into e of y so e of x is equal to e of x y upon e of y the answer is b uh, in uh, a normal distribution the property is valid the the following property is valid the mean of the distribution is always zero it approaches t distribution as the limits of the normal distribution are widened the distribution is symmetric about uh, its mean uh, about its mean and uh, like uh, none of the above so as i said earlier also normal distribution uh, is like a bell curve the mean is at the center so basically mean is the central axis of the bell curve so then you have uh, standard deviation so th then you have one one sigma um then you have two sigma so basically you can see that the standard deviation is basically symmet uh, like equidistant so basically negative and positive so that is how it, uh, this a uh, normal uh, curve looks like so distribution uh, so the answer is uh, the uh, normal distribution is symmetric about its mean so in a normal distribution the parameters are uh, mean is 5 sta uh, standard deviation is 2 uh, this means that the ratio of standard oh, in the previous uh, in the previous question the mean should be 0 now in no 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 in uh, in normal distribution no, in normal <laughs> mean is not zero you can have non uh, non zero mean okay you can have non zero mean so the answer is uh, so uh, so moving to the question number 3 in a normal distribution the parameters are mean is equal to 5 standard deviation is 2 this means that the ratio of mean to standard deviation for of the distribution is 2.5 the variance of distribution is 4 the area under the normal probability distribution from uh, 2 to 5 uh, x equal to 2 to x equal to 5 is same as the area uh, from x is equal to 5 to x is equal to 8 so as as i said all and the last question all of the above so as i said i hope the screen is visible now there is some problem again um
Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the as I said earlier, so this is the if we uh, plot the uh, like in the as per the normal distribution curve, we plot the all the parameters. Uh, so what we will see is five is the mean. So the entire um, graph will uh, be um, at centered at five. So what you can see is basically uh, the uh, the uh, area under the curve from two uh, two to five will be equal to uh, five to eight, uh, and uh, like uh, the other things. So basically, uh, standard deviation to uh, ratio of standard deviation to uh, mean to standard deviation. So uh, where you divide the first question option is you divide five by two. So the answer is two by five. Obvious, obviously, and the variance is basically two into the standard deviation. So the standard deviation when it is given as two. So variance is four. So standard deviation is basically. Um, so I'll just give you a basic understanding of what it is. So um, you have a value. So okay. So value is ten. Ten. Uh, and then the standard deviation. Uh, standard deviation is basically uh, the value can. Uh, so you estimate a value. So you estimate a population of uh, per se. Uh, you estimate a population of ten is ten. Ten uh, crores. Uh, plus minus one crore. So. What the standard deviation will be is standard deviation will be that one, so that will be one crore. Uh, so that is the deviation that can happen. So it can be either be nine or it can be eleven. So that one that is there that can the deviation can be there from the um, mean value is called as the standard deviation. Variance is on the other hand is the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So basically, uh, your population can be either nine crore or it can be eleven crore, right? So when you are estimating uh, and saying that the population of Chennai is either t- uh, 10 crore uh, plus minus one, you are you, it can be either 9 crore or 11 crore. So in that case, the variance will be 11 minus 9, so that is 2. So the sta- standard deviation is basically the like from the mean how much it can change. So it can be either plus minus one, and the variation is can be uh, the vary vari- uh, the variance is basically the twice into standard dist- uh, deviation. So uh, that is equal to uh, the um, difference between the maximum and the minimum. So I hope I am uh, able to uh, explain it to you. So th- uh, in this, the answer is all of the above. Um, so moving to uh, 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 question number uh, four in factorial design. Uh, Uh, the the two raised to four uh, st- uh, design strategy was chosen. This means that the number of experiments is sixteen. Uh, Each of the two variables are at four levels. Um, uh, after t- uh, after the test, ANOVA will not be able to detect the ternary interaction effects between the variables. None uh, none of the above. So basically, two raised to uh, so any factorial design. Basically, factorial design is basically here we are having two raised to two factorial design. So In this, uh, any factorial design, you only have two levels. For any variable, we'll have only two levels: high level and low level. So basically, what you do is, uh, when you are doing two raised to two factorial design, you put uh, both independent variable one and uh, independent variable two are at low. Then uh, independent variable one is low, but independent variable two is high. Then uh, do it the same way, uh, where you keep, uh, you change uh, this uh, the independent variable. Uh, Uh, one to high, then you uh, ch- check it again with uh, uh, the low value and high value of independent variable two. So that is how it happens. So it will always have in, when you are doing factorial design, there will be only two two stages, uh, high and low for every parameter. But uh, the number of uh, experiments that will happen will uh, depend on two raised to uh, the power. So if it is two raised to three uh, design, there will be eight experiments. Two raised to four, it is uh, for sixteen uh, experiments. So that is how it, uh, this uh, factorial design strategy works. I hope I am clear. Uh, question number five: In statistical design uh, of experimental study, the effects of two factors A and B were analyzed at two levels. It was found that A was changed. Yeah, uh, in the previous uh, in the previous question, uh, what's the role of ANOVA in uh, the previous question? ANOVA basically is analysis of uh, variance. Uh, so basically, that is a test. So basically, it is uh, uh, it is not given in your syllabus, I think so. But ANOVA basically, kya, uh, uh, whether the data has um, so it is a te- um, there is a table out of it. 
so you test the means of uh, every um, uh, se uh, section per se or every interval you say uh, and then you uh, find out uh, some uh, standard deviation and then uh, there is one table from which you have to refer so if the value falls within that uh, table uh, within that uh, interval you find okay then uh, the, uh, it, the uh, test integrity is uh, your data is proper so basically what it does is uh, uh, ANOVA is called a an, uh, analysis of variance so it is a uh, statistical technique uh, that is used to uh, check whether your data in all the intervals is like um, what you say it has integrity or not so it is used uh, for those kind of uh, like uh, thing so uh, here uh, ANOVA will be able to detect the variance so, so that is uh, what uh, happens in factorial design so because your data will be have integrity it will be able to <laughs> detect the variance so moving to uh, i hope i'm clear moving to the next question uh, in yeah. statistical design, yes. uh, design of experiments the effect of two factors a and b were analyzed at two levels it was found that uh, when a was changed from low to high settings at fixed low, uh, low level of b the change in response was uh, increase in 10 units now when the a is changed to low settings from uh, from low settings to high settings at the fixed amount of b the change in the response was decrease in uh, 10 units this means that there is no interaction between a and b a interacts with b but b does not interact with a b interacts with a but a does not interact with b there is negative interaction between the factors of a and b so what is happening here is basically you are having a at low uh, b is uh, b is uh, fixed at lower level and then you move from uh, a from uh, low to high okay uh, then in the second case uh, you see that the, the response changes uh, there is increase of 10 units in the second case what you do is uh, you uh, change the b level so b you move to higher level and then again you do the same testing so you move a from low to high but you are fixing b at higher level so when you uh, when the b goes up uh, a comes down so the a response comes down so the a response becomes negative so the answer is basically there is negative interaction between the factors a and b um, in hypothesis testing wrongly rejecting a null hypothesis is more serious mistake than uh, wrongly uh, than wrongly accepting it wrongly accepting null hypothesis is more serious mistake than wrongly rejecting it uh, wrongly accepting uh, null hypothesis is equivalent to accepting alternate hypothesis um, wrongly accepting null hypothesis means that the alternate hypothesis is incorrectly rejected so bas basically in hypothesis testing i think so there is a yeah so basically what happens is basically there are two conditions so you accept or do not reject okay so uh, in the, uh, this case so basically when you are doing it uh, when you uh, wrongly reject the null hypothesis it becomes a like a uh, big uh, bigger uh, bigger problem uh, compared to uh, like uh, wrongly uh, accepting it uh, so uh, moving to the seventh question in a one tail hypothesis test the level of significance of alpha is set to 0 0.05 in order for a particular effect to be significant the uh, p value of the test should be exactly uh, 0.05 above 0.05 below 0.05 exactly 0.025 so this is basically uh, it is given that one tailed uh, uh, testing so there is uh, in hypothesis testing there will be two tailed and one tailed testing so in this uh, it is a one tailed testing so basically what happens is the alpha value should be uh, so this is basically uh, uh, um, like to accept the hypothesis so uh, the alpha value should lie in this region so that is less than 0 0.05 uh, so it is uh, below 0 0.05 uh, so um, you have to uh, for uh, the level of significance should be below uh, 0 0.05 if it is a two tailed testing it should be below 0 0.025 so it if it was a two tailed hypothesis testing it should be alpha by 2 uh, so that is how it works uh, so when the data is fitted to a model then increasingly the number of model parameters is penalized by the r square criterion adjusted r square criterion sum of uh, residual sum of absolute residuals so basically this is given in the um, uh, lectures um, so uh, it is uh, it is done by adjusted r square criterion um, uh, the ninth question it is 
in a typical central composite design the repeats are performed to obtain an estimate of uh, random experimental error at the center of the experimental design space to help identifying the model curvature all of the above so basically what happens in central co uh, composite design is basically you uh, make a com design space so basically you pr plot your uh, variables and then you make a like uh, a window within which you will conduct all the experiments so when you have created this window if you can see in this uh, figure uh, this window so uh, all your experiment will be within 0 to 1 or uh, so it will be like minus 1 to 1 and uh, plus 1 to uh, like uh, it will be like uh, for both uh, all the uh, um, like both x and y will be between minus 1 and 1 uh, in this design space so basically that is uh, what the central composite design actually looks like so basically when you are doing central composite design the repeats are basically performed to estimate the random experimental error to find the center of the design space so basically if you find the center of the design space then you, uh, all the other things are mirror image right so that is why you do it and you also find out the model curvature so the three things you do it so uh, to pu uh, to find out all the three things you perform the repeats so again uh, the last question uh, in a central composite design involving two factors a and b the response surface is described in uh, by a quadratic model if the um, uh, interaction between a and b Sorry, again okay so Sorry, uh, a screen is not visible actually so now uh, nine is visible is it visible now Nine is visible. <laughs> yeah, so uh, was this uh, is it is it visible? I think so. It's now visible. Ninth oh, is sorry. visible, sir. Yeah, so they want. I'm sorry, so yeah i'll come from eight so i hope the slides are visible now uh, we don't uh, so basically uh, when data is fitted to a model the increasing the number of model parameters is penalized by uh, r square criterion adjusted r square criterion sum of squares of residuals sum of absolute residuals so the answer is r square criterion so basically this is a very uh, like recall type of question. Sir, questions, are, questions are not visible, sir. I'll just uh, turn off. Question is not visible. Only participants are visible. Multiple participants are visible okay, okay. in the screen. Your uh, uh, PDF file or presentation is not visible, sir. Okay, I'll just uh, restart. Re re uh, some problem with the net actually. So, is it visible now? Uh, no, wait, wait, wait. It's loading. Yeah, I think so. Now it should be visible. Yes, now it is visible, sir. Yes. Question eight is visible. Yeah. So now I'll just move from question eight. Um. So. So this is a uh, completely recall kind of question. So basically, when the data is fitted to a model, then increasing the number of model parameters is penalized by. So the answer is uh, adjusted R square criterion. So it is given in the uh, like um, lectures. So it is. Um, uh, this is all what you need to know so question number nine in a typical central composite design the repeats are performed to obtain an estimate of the random experimental error uh, uh, at, uh, at the center of the experimental design space uh, to help the identifying the model curvature uh, all of the above so basically what happens in central composite uh, design is basically you make a like a design window so if you can see um, uh, from this slide you basically make a window within which you perform all the experiments so basically now here we, there is a window between minus 1 to uh, 1 
so you can see here the center uh, the center is zero zero and um, there is a window so all the experiments that will be done will be performed within this window you will not go beyond the window and what will be the benefit is then you will be able to find out the errors uh, you will be able to minimize the errors and you will also find out the model curvature how the curvature looks so it is it will not be a uh, like a square per se it will be it can be any others uh, it can be a curve also so um but uh, this design space is very important in finding out so the answer is basically all of the above uh, in the so in uh, central composite design uh, involving two factors a and b the response surface is described by quadratic model uh, if the uh, effect of interaction between a and b is only uh, absent the relevant significant effects are from um a only a and b only a b a square uh, and b square uh, a b a square uh, a cube and b cube so it is uh, basically this is given by this uh, equation uh, you can see here so when you are having a quadratic equation uh, this is uh, the equation given so what they are saying is the say uh, this term so that is the b uh, beta x1 a, 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 x i x j this is no, not uh, there is no interaction so basically then what will be the thing is only beta not so that is obviously we have to find out so the first will be a b you, uh, there is interaction and then there is a interaction between a square and b square so these are these are the four terms that will uh, play an impact so with this we have completed the week 7 uh, week 8 we did yesterday only it is basic uh, very basic um, like um uh, uh questions maybe you can go through yesterday's video so i won't uh, waste time because anyway we are over time so we'll just move move to your questions so can you uh, whatever your questions are can you just unmute yourself and ask uh, the questions because we are anyway over time so uh, because i have some other commitments also so you can just um, like uh, unmute yourself and ask your question so the recorded questions uh, so we have got from sania varikar uh, that um, the recorded questions so recorded questions you can uh, go to the nptel uh, uh, nptel uh, website uh, find uh, on the left side at the bottom there will be problem session recording so once you go there uh, there you will find out the a google sheet will open with that you will get the youtube links of all the videos that has been done a drive folder with all the pdfs of all the um, like um, of uh, drive folder with, uh, all the pdfs of all the sessions that has been conducted and uh, like uh, the important uh, other important things uh, important things for the exam as i said again uh, like, um, um yeah so i i have a doubt like i am not a hello your your voice is got broken can you repeat i'll just uh, switch off the screen sharing maybe this is uh, taking up the bandwidth i'll just stop. yeah you can ask your question now yeah so i have this doubt in stationary point like is stationary point related to response surface methodology like is it the minima that we are trying to find what is stationary point stationary point is basically the center line so basically kya kya hota hai Uh, you are making, uh, you are uh, plotting, uh, you are getting that um, entire uh, design space, right? So design space, the center point need not always be zero point zero. The center of the design space is basically uh, termed as the uh, stationary point. Uh, if you draw an axis, uh, if you draw y axis and x axis about it, it will be a mirror image. So that is the uh, what is the significance of the stationary point. I hope I am able to explain it to you without the slides. but uh, that is how it is so uh yeah so what about the eigen values mentioned for stationary point like so eigen uh, so eigen values basically for every matrix there are eigen values so from the eigen values what you need to know so eigen values is basically it's uh, you have to uh, there is a formula for a inverse and all those things it's there but uh, what you are uh, what majorly may, uh, bothers you is basically uh, the eigen values the va if it is uh, positive it is at minima 
um, if it is uh, uh, negative it is at the maxima so that is the only thing you need to understand in uh, in case of that uh, specific i have uh, even made the slide uh, there so that is all you need to know because uh, what eigen values are and all those things it is very div uh, it's uh, very um, like broad uh, only the statistic people know so this is only the basic you need to know from uh, that standpoint so eigen values will be defining the minima and the maxima so, I, I, and uh, eigen yeah, and state point yeah, yeah please 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 proceed and then how are these eigen values related to the stationary point so ba basically you have x that is the point at which the um data is taken right then uh, there is the data value and you find the eigen values for that the, that equation you uh, the matrix equation you solve it you get the eigen values for that um, uh, equa equation per se and then what you get the eigen values from that you can find out whether the stationary points are at uh, minima or or at maxima so it is um, a bit complicated to understand but all what you need to know for now is uh, the minima and maxima that one sentence is there that is all what you need to know for now because uh, that is like a lot of things are there in that and even uh, even the sir has uh, skipped through it in even in the videos if you go through the videos he has also skipped through it very fast uh, so uh, that won't come into exam because it, it is a very high level statistical uh, concept so even uh, i am also not completely idea because my background is engineering i am not uh, that into like i don't understand uh, i am not that much into maths like my for my work i only need anova or t test or uh, like that much even i don't understand what it has been given but as much as i can tell you that in the exam from the exam standpoint you only need to know that one statement and maybe that equation that uh, one equation is there in that slide um, you can uh, go through the pdf you will find out uh, that a inverse or something that that b inverse uh, that uh, equation is there and the statement uh, minus uh, half b inverse yeah. yeah yeah so that is all you need to know because yeah, if you go deep into it it is uh, very complicated even i i don't have a complete understanding of it so i won't i don't want to misguide you per se so because that is completely a mathematical statistical concept from engineering standpoint even i don't have much idea about it okay thank you uh, so yeah so um, i have uh, uploaded yesterday's pdf and uh, yesterday's uh, um no sorry i have forgot to upload the yesterday's video i'll upload it now so i have uploaded yesterday's video i'll upload today's uh, yesterday's pdf and today's pdf uh so from that standpoint you are done so for for the exam so now for the exam i'll just tell you so you need to uh, the exam pattern how many exams uh, how many uh, is not how many questions will be asked we don't know that i cannot i don't i, don't, I have no idea i have asked for a instructor session i have mailed them Uh, and ask them to arrange a instructor session i don't know what they, uh, whether it will be conducted or not but i have mailed them from my side uh, so that one thing is done so but exam pattern i can tell you like with 95% guarantee that there won't be any descriptive question there will be either mcq or msqs so that is i can tell you with 95% uh, guarantee 5% i cannot guarantee you but 95% i can uh, assure you that it will be uh, mcq only um mcq or msq so uh, whether it will be mcq or msq i don't know but it will be objective type questions only so that much i can uh, assure you second thing there will be three types of questions there will be recall uh, there will be uh, application and there will be miscellaneous so miscellaneous will be 20% that will be like uh, any, uh, that you leave that uh, that will be like you will uh, read the question you will understand the question and you have to apply it uh so recall will be based on the video so i would urge you to go through all the videos uh especially week 2 to week 7 week 1 and week 8 you can skip uh week 7 uh, is the most important one from there the mo uh, many questions will come week uh, so you can go through 7 6 5 4 3 2 you can come in that order also because 7 and 6 uh, are very important the questions related to ip uh trademarks and all those things and uh, question related to uh this uh, statistical uh, questions will uh, be there uh 
and uh, application is basically the assignment or assignment type of question so what questions have been given by me in the assignments in the by uh, sindhu madam in the assignments and this year assignment you can do all these things uh, you will get at least 40 40 to 45% of the questions from this um, like the uh, maybe you will be able to solve at least 40 to 45 questions i am not saying that the questions will be repeated but the questions will be of the similar lines and if you think you will be able to answer them so now uh, you have time till saturday uh, go through videos uh, one and eight skip it start with seven uh, come uh, come to week two like seven six five four three two uh, that is one uh, go through the P pdfs now don't waste your time going through the videos go through the pdf of all the um, lectures the uh, se sessions that have been taken go through this year's assignment uh, and that's it uh, and most important thing even if you don't study anything uh, read the questions through common sense you will be able to answer most of the questions so if you, uh, the, i know there are many people who won't get time who will uh, think that they'll study but they will not be able to study there will be many questions there will be many problems that will uh, plague you but i can tell you one thing if you pay your attention in the exam in those three hours if you pay attention uh, even if you don't study you will still uh, score a, a very good mark so pay attention read every question uh, once or twice and um, like uh, do well in your exam that's all uh, i can tell you any other questions so did you uh, of this current uh, things assignment uh, did you uh, i mean say one uh, assignment number of current my, uh, my my means this year's uh, uh, yes sir means now uh, now this current session sir yeah yeah i have not seen it uh, any problem no sir but uh, i am asking that uh, the you said that the video means we, we have to watch the video 7654 huh that of current session or last year last year assignment sir no no the uh, 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 the videos of uh, faculty so what faculty is there no that uh, sir will uh, sir uh, the uh, week 1 content week 2 content week 3 content that uh, is there no those videos yes sir yes sir but uh, means that uh, up of now at uh, present we are submitting assignment that video are yeah 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 those videos oh. from 7 oh. you start and up to 2 uh, don't waste your time on uh, like 1 uh, and 8 uh the those are like uh, not very important start from 7 come to 2 uh maybe uh, repeat 7 uh, twice but uh, understand them and even if you are not able to study i know many of you all have not studied even many of you all will not be able to study they will have some family issues or something or other don't worry you will be still be able to pass just pay your attention during your exam that's more than enough okay so yeah, okay. many of you i know have not been able to study i am not uh, like uh, doing it even when i have given nptel exam i also had the same problem so don't worry but just pay attention during the exam uh, don't uh, be in a hurry people might leave the exam hall but don't uh, be in a hurry uh, solve the questions uh, uh, read every question once or twice so uh anyone else has any question else uh, we will sir how how patent and uh, copyright are different so patent is basically for uh, like uh, copy so basically there are three uh, four things of intellectual property there is one patent and design so these are basically involved with scientific uh, things so uh, industrial design is basically we, uh, you can take an example of your car so car uh, design if you see it will uh, have uh, like the curves will be there there will be uh, the grill design everything every car has a different design you can see and every uh, uh, like company also has a different design language so that comes under industrial uh, design so now patent so patent is basically if you have a uh, example up uh, you can take of a um, fuel cell car so when you are having developing a new battery or you are developing something like if, uh, if you develop a new battery type of thing or new technology kind of thing that comes under the patent thing okay so uh, you understood uh, what is the difference between design and patent so then trademark or word mark basically is like uh, reebok google coca cola everything that comes under uh, trademark or word mark and copyright is basically for literature so it is uh, related to films it is related to um, like 
uh, books and all those things. So when you uh, do piracy of your film, so if you take any uh, film and you down, uh, uh, like even on YouTube, if you download any film from uh, torrent and if you put on YouTube, uh, what you get is a copyright strike because ev- uh, anything that is related to literature has a copyright strike. If you uh, take somebody's invention and if you do um, like if you take uh, some uh, in uh, Tata's, uh, if you take a Tata Nano and if you de- make your own Nano, and, uh, and what the uh, the what you will get is you will get a design uh, infringement. If you take a technology, if you take iPhone battery, and if you make a uh, your own battery using that uh, technology or that um, uh, uh, like that concept, and what you will get is you will get a p- uh, patent infringement. So. That is what is the d- difference between all the intellectual properties. I hope I'm clear. If you have any doubts, you can unmute and ask. Um, Sir, copyright and uh, like the uh, duration of the uh, uh, validity of yeah. the copyright and the duration of like e- YouTube channels, like you are telling. So, is it same? No, no. See, so, so copyright is not uh, like uh, copy. Uh, so, copyright is uh, the author. Uh, copyright uh, the YouTube channel I don't know how it works but uh, basically if there is any film so like uh, you, you might have heard about the Salim Javed issue so basically what happened is for the Shole so for the Shole uh, film they have rights till uh, like ha- like if Salim and Javed both have the rights so if per se uh, Salim Khan uh, dies first and uh, Javed uh, Akhtar uh, uh, dies later so from Javed Akhtar's death till 60 years after his death the uh, people uh, like Javed Akhtar has the copyright for that after 60 years somebody can remake Shole without giving any credit to uh, Javed Akhtar and uh, Salim uh, Salim Khan so that is how the copyright works patent is 20 years design is 15 years okay thank you thank you sir okay so great so, uh, could you explain what is a geographical indicator, sir? So, so geographical indicators is basically it uh, for if something is grown in that uh, region or uh, per se. So, uh, like uh, you uh, you might have heard about the Araku Valley, uh, Valley co- coffee or Darjeeling tea. So, when uh, something is grown only in that region, uh, then it gets a like geographical indicator so that they can. Um, so if if uh, if it's a normal tea and if it is a Darjeeling tea, the value if uh, with the name Darjeeling itself the uh, says that the tea is coming from Darjeeling, so that increases the value of uh, the Darjeeling tea, right? So that is why the geographical in, uh, they came up with the concept of geographical indicators. So it says that this product comes from this product uh, is different. So uh, a tea coming from Darjeeling is different from tea coming from Sri Lanka, and that is why. Um, we are giving a geographical indicator to Darjeeling tea and that will be a, a differentiator. So that is a, so when something is made in that specific region, uh, that geography, it is give, uh, called as a geographical indicator. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Clear. Okay. So Madam uh, Vasudra, uh, Madam has asked a very important question. How to solve uh, problems in week seven? So uh, problems will uh, be uh, not be there because even in assignments the problems are not there and even if the problems are there it will be like the problems which we discussed that the mean is given as 5 and uh, uh, standard deviation is given as 2 so those will be very like simple uh, problems it will not be very like um, difficult problems so f- don't focus on problems because now we don't have that much time to uh, focus up on the problems so by heart all the formulas uh, whatever you can find out and um, like do it because uh, if you are able to solve it, uh, then well and good. But like, uh, I don't think that will be uh, like very big. Uh, the problems will be uh, like even if they come, it will not be more than one one question or two question maximum. So focus on the like concepts rather than solving the problems. So I can uh, 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 tell you that for now. Uh, so if you don't have any questions, you are free to leave. Because we are anyway uh, like um, over time, and uh, I also have uh, like uh, I, have, I also have to uh, some other commitments. So uh, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and ask. 
else you have sir how many total total questions so i i said uh, as i said it is uh, i don't know about it so i have sent mpt okay. and the uh, request for uh, arranging a tutor or uh, the instructor led session uh, we'll see uh, what they do but uh, okay. i can uh, tell you that uh, you will have ample time so m- not more than 100 and you have 3 hours so even if right. there is 100 questions you you will uh, not you don't have to yeah. worry yeah. right so okay. don't worry right. about uh, that thing that is like the least of your worries <laughs> i can assure you that thank you thank you sir so nice of you okay so if you don't have any questions we'll end the session because even i have been talking continuously <laughs> so any other questions uh so i wish you all the best for your exams uh you can uh, i uh, you can like uh just uh, like yeah uh, wish you all the best and um, hope to uh, maybe meet uh, like have uh, interaction in any uh, conference or something like that uh, with you uh, in future uh, thank you for uh, being so cooperative uh thank you thank you very much thank you thank you so much sir thank you thank you adish thank you thank you sir okay i'll end the call uh, thank you